Amen. I guess you didn't expect to see me here today. <laughs> yeah, I'm just as surprised as you are, but amen. Here I am. Amen, amen. Let's go ahead and just stand as we go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we just want to thank you. Thank you for this day that you have given us. Thank you for your blessings. We're here in the house of the Lord, and we're here to worship you in spirit and in truth. Father, we thank you for the freedom to worship you today. We thank you that we're here to open our mouths, Lord, and to praise you. There are needs in this house, Lord, that needs to be filled. And Father, so we're going to open the doors of heaven with our praise so that when the blessing comes down, Lord, the needs will be fulfilled. So Father, we just want to thank you. We we encourage you, dear Father, to come into our midst today, Lord. We invite you. Let your Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus, just come in. Let your anointing fill this sanctuary today as we come to you. Father, bless the word, Lord. I am your humble servant, Lord. And I pray, dear God, that you will use me the way you want to use me right now. And let your people be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, I need you to turn to Isaiah 43, verses 1 through 5a. Isaiah 43, verses 1 through 5a. You got it? But now, O Jacob, listen to the, word, to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you says, do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. Verse 3 said, For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I gave Egypt as a ransom for your freedom. I gave Ethiopia and Seba in your place. Others were given in exchange for you. I traded their lives for yours because you are precious to me you are honored and I love you. And the message translation says, but now God's message, God is talking to Israel, the God who made you in the first place, Jacob. And then he's talking to me too, Geneva. I'm putting my name there, you put your name there. The one who got you started, Geneva, don't be afraid because I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. I am his. When you're in rough waters, you will not go down. When you are between a rock and a hard place, it won't be a dead end. Because I am your God, your personal God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I paid a huge price for you. Egypt was rich and Seba thrown in. How much That tells you how much you mean to me. I'll sell off the whole world to get you back. I'll trade nations just for you. So don't be afraid. I am yours. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Pray with me today. Okay, so just let's look at these verses a little bit closer. And God is talking to us this morning here at One in Christ Ministry. He says, but now God is talking to One in Christ Ministry, the God who made you in the first place. He identified himself, and he identified what he did for you. He said... The one who got you started in the first place. I have created you. I've called you by name. And he claims you. He says, 
you are mine. When you are in over your head, and he's telling you that you are going to go in over your head. There are some things that is going to be troublesome to you. He says, but don't be afraid. I'll be with you. When you're between a rock and a hard place, it's not a dead end. And he says, because I am your God, your personal God. So if I had to choose a topic today, I'd say stay with God. Trust in God in difficult times. Amen? Stay with him. Don't leave. There's no safer place but in the hands of God. So for most of us this morning, you know, reading this scripture and just looking at it and getting his commandments and getting his promises, that would be enough for us. I could just close up my iPad and I'll say amen and, and we could go home because we got our promises and we got God to say, hey, don't be afraid. I am with you. You got your command and you got your promise. But if you're like some of us this morning that says, when I'm going through a hard time, my first instinct is to isolate myself, doubt God, question God's love for me. I shut down my emotions so that I don't have to feel or rely on anyone. I stop coming to church. I don't pray. I don't read my Bible. I don't answer the phone when the church people are calling. And rather than let God and the people that he surrounded me with comfort me and reassure me that God is for me, I push people away and contemplate whether God is real or whether it's worth saving, serving him. If that's you this morning, then I want to encourage you, stay with God. Stay with God. Trust him when you go through the deep waters. Trust him when you're in the fire. Trust him when your back is against the wall. His promise is true. He keeps saying it over and over again. Don't be afraid. I am with you. And surely every one of us in here today know that we're going to go through some deep waters. We're going to go through some fires. It might not be a literal fire, but sometimes the situation that we get ourselves into or our God lead us into just feels so hot. And so, and so it feels like flames. But God is saying to us today, stay with me. Stay with me. And so the rough waters, fires, your back against the wall are difficult times that we all go through. But I want to tell you that not all difficult times that we go through are our faults. Sometimes we are led away by sin, of course, and we get ourselves into hot waters. Sometimes we're tested by God. And it is during these times that we need to know the difference whether we're tempted or we're being tested. So I just want to encourage you today, don't give Satan the credit he deserves. He, he got too much of it already. You see, when we are being tested by God, you will know. You will know. And we have a tendency to face things differently. Because when I'm being tested, I do a self-check. I said, okay, where did I go wrong? Did I walk away from God or did I sin? I do a self-check. But when I, the answer to that is no, then I said, okay, whew, I'm being tested by God. Okay? All right, so when I don't have a problem, and most of us don't have a problem trusting God when things are going well. Can I see a hand with that? Most of us don't. But it's when we go through those bumpy roads, when life becomes difficult, when our relationships fail, when we get diagnosed with cancer, when my sister died, oh my goodness, when we hear bad news, then that's the time we question. And some of us have trust issues. Christians have trust issues. 
And we put God into the same category as humans. We don't trust human. So when we go through something, we have a trust issue with God. I want to caution you today and caution myself. Don't put God into the same category as human. He never fails. He doesn't lie. He keeps his promises. So don't put him in the same category as human. Amen? And so when we go through stuff, we said, God, where are you? And God says, I'm here. And we said, God, I don't feel you. And he said, I'm here. But God, I don't see you moving in my life. I don't see you making a way for me. And he said, I'm still here. And then you start with this downward spiral. Mm. If you love me, that word if. If you love me, why am I going through this? If you love me, why can't I see my way? Why can't I pay my bills? Why am I getting sick? If you love me, Lord, why did I get bad news? And we start to mistrust him. And those are the times that the devil and the world is watching the children of God and saying, oh, I thought you were a Christian. I thought you were serving God. So if you're serving him, what's going on? The world watches us closely. But those are the times that we need to open our mouth and invite the presence of God in. You see, when we start to praise God, when we start to lift our hands to him, when we start to glorify God and call upon the name of Jesus, it opens the door for God to come in and bless us. Move some things out of the way, close some doors, and show you that he is still with you. So instead of complaining, instead of worrying, instead of doubting, start Praise in God. Give him a sacrifice of praise. Give him a sacrifice of praise. I know it's hard at times when we are being tempted on each side that the last thing I want to do is worship him. Because all I want to do is say, hey, just give me a break. I just came out of something. You know? But those are the times I'm saying, Lord, you've got me here for a reason. And if you woke me up this morning, then I'm a victorious person. So those are the times that you claim your territory. You claim what God has for you and see yourself coming out. Okay? Now, let us look at some people in the Bible that go through some things. Let's look at Moses. Hmm. Trust in God when there was no way out. Moses is a gr was a great leader. He led the children of Israel out of Egypt. But it got to a time where Moses' back was against the Red Sea. And in front of him was a host of um, Israelites. And behind them was the Egyptian army. And of course, there was nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. So Moses did what he normally does, and he cried out to God. You see, Moses couldn't go backwards. Moses couldn't go sideways. And Moses couldn't go forward. His back was against the wall. So he cried out to God, and God did the impossible. So he did what was possible. He cried out to God, and he left the impossible to God who parted the Red Sea. Now, I'm asking you, your back is against the wall. What are you going to do? You might not have a rod in your hand, but you do have a voice. And when you open your mouth and start praising God, your Red Sea can also be parted. There is no reason you have to keep your back against the wall unless you choose to. Because Praising God, worshiping him is a sacrifice, is what we do. Amen? And then let's look at 
the three Hebrew boys. Hmm. So Moses' back was against the wall. These boys were thrown into the flames. We know this story. These three innocent boys really got thrown into a fire, not because of what they did, but who they stood for. Not because they did anything wrong, but because they did the right thing. Now, I want to know, be honest to yourself, if that was you and you had to bow down to a golden image to save your life, how many of us would have done it? You know, you know that you'll probably say, you know, God, you know my heart. I'm a bow down to, to this image, but I'm actually bowing down to you. You know my heart. I'm loving you. And when I get out of this situation, God, I'm going to praise you. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. But these voices, no, we're not doing this. And so King Nebuchadnezzar said, I'm giving you one more chance. And when you hear the music, you bow down. If you don't, I'm going to throw you into the fire. But these three boys stood their ground because they believed in the power of their God. Do you believe in the power of your God when you're being tested to do something? You see, Nebuchadnezzar knew that if he threw them in the fire, it would send a, a signal. Anybody else want to do this? Come on, let's do this. You either bow or you go in the fire. But these boys, they stood their ground. And what they did was they, they said to Nebuchadnezzar, you know, I get you, you're king. This is my version of it. I get you, you're the king. You made this golden image. And you are expecting me to bow. But you see the God that I serve? is a living God. It's not a golden statue. So I will not bow to that. And the God that I serve, if you throw me in the fire, he will deliver me. But I love what they said afterwards. They said, even if he doesn't, he's still able to deliver. So if God doesn't answer you, do you believe he's still able to take you out of your situations? You see, sometimes you have to get into the fire so God can purify you. And sometimes you go into the fire so God can keep you on your knees. And sometimes you could go into the fire so God could show you his glory and show others around you his glory. So let me ask you something. How many of us are willing to be thrown into a fire just to be able to be in the will of God. Amen, amen, amen. And then we come to the rough waters. Oh, my Lord. And we're talking about David. King David. Trust in God when you're going through rough waters. And you know, your rough waters could be anything. It could be anything. It could be a sickness, a divorce, Death, bad news, loss of job, foreclosure in your house, repossession, failed relationships, whatever it is, that's your rough water. And David was anointed king when he was young, and he was hailed a hero for conquering Goliath. And he, he was a, a leader of the, um, the military army of Israel. And then he married the king's daughter. He had it going for a while. But then suddenly, because of a jealous king, he was hiding even in caves. That's not how he pictured his life. And so he was in caves with misfits. And he probably think, this is not my destiny. I'm supposed to be a king. Why am I going through this? And if we find ourselves going through rough waters, when I think about rough water, I imagine turbulence, rip current, rising tide, the waters that 
it comes from somewhere and it's going somewhere very fast. You have no control over these waters. Now, the water is going, the rip current is strong, you're in the water, your feet is off the ground, and you're being tossed to and fro. You don't have a lifeline, you don't have anyone to call on, and then there, not only are you being tossed, there's some rocks in the water, and I might get hurt, because I have no control where the current is taking me. And I'll look at it and I said, my God, that sounds like much of the troubles that we go through. We have no control over it. We're in this mess, and in this mess we find ourselves in more mess. We get hurt, our feelings get hurt, our physical health is attacked, our minds get jacked up. You know, and those are the turbulence and the rip current that we go through in rough waters. But even in the rough waters, God says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. I've got you in the palm of my hands. He said, don't be afraid. I am with you. It doesn't matter if you feel out of control. He's in control. He is in control. He said, you're not going to drown. Just trust me. I got you. So, you know, it looks like sometimes when we're going through these, we need to just imagine God right there and just holding us in the palm of his hand. And when I'm being tossed back and forth and I don't know what to do, I'm going to stay in that current, and I'm going to ask God, you know, water in the Bible is a sign of purity. What are you doing to me? Are you purifying me, Father? What is your goal? What is your destiny for my life? Because your destiny for my life doesn't change because of the circumstances I'm in. I'm in here, but what are you doing in my life? And I'm not going to complain. In that rip current, when he's tossing me back and forth, and I don't have a lifeline, I, when you think I don't have a lifeline, I do have a lifeline. I have my mouth. I have my breath. I have my praises. So I am going to praise God even in the midst of all this. This is not going to take overtake me. I am truly victorious. You are truly victorious. Amen? And then you said to me now, I'm pretty sure you're sitting there, you said, Okay, so you told us about Moses, and you told us about the three Hebrew boys, and you told us about David, but you don't know my story. <laughs> How do you trust God to show up for me when I'm going through that rough water? Because right now, I feel like I'm in the flames, or I feel feel like I'm in the rough waters. And God said, stay with me. But it's hard to stay with him. I don't see him. I don't hear him. I don't feel him. I don't feel like going to church. I don't feel like doing this. I don't feel like doing that. I can barely get my head up off the pillow. I'm going into depression. I can feel it. And I'm getting sick over this nonsense. Mm. And every fiber inside of you say, give up. Just give up. Like Job's wife tell him, just curse God and die. Mm, just give up. God doesn't love you. But I want to read something to you. Because God loves you, you can show your trust in him by, taking, by talking about all your true feelings and circumstances with him. The good the bad and the ugly. You see, you think that God expects you to be strong all the time. Mm -mm. He knows our weaknesses. So there are times we're going to be weak. And there are times that we're going to say, God, ah, I don't feel strong today. But David said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And this is going, this is going to sound funny, but even in times when you feel strong, be careful. Because at any moment, pride can set in and it will fall, you will fall. 
But God is saying to us, I love you with an everlasting love. Do not walk away from me. I traded my son's life for you. That's how much I love you. I will sell off nations just for you. That is his promise. So what else would a God do but stay by you? and encourage you, and every time he gets a chance to tell you, I'm with you, I'm with you. Be honest and transparent with him. See, sometimes we go to God and we just, we just talk. And when we, when we get up, we don't feel any different. But in sincerity, when you go to him, mm, he knows our heart. So why hide it from him? You can't hide your feelings from him. And if you doubt him, just tell him. If you don't see him, just tell him. If you don't feel him, just tell him. He understands. He understands. He cares about you. He knows about all your faults. <laughs> he knows about your disappointments and your frustration. And he doesn't judge you by it. He loves you the same. He loves you the same. And I'm going to tell you that it doesn't matter what you do. His blood covers you. His blood covers you. So I'm not going to stand up and tell you, do this, 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 that, and that to be in the presence of the Lord. I'm just going to let you know by trusting God, <laughs> by trusting him and you continue to trust him, he will deliver. He will deliver. There is no if, ands, or buts about this. He will deliver. Now, I'm not going to tell you that there are 10 things to do to get into the presence of the Lord. I'm just going to tell you about two of them. Prior and the scripture. That's it. Prior and the scripture. You see, prior will get you through everything any tough times. It will get you through the flames and it will get you delivered when your back is against the wall. Stay with God. Prayer has proven to be my lifeline, especially when I'm going through. You see, sometimes when we're going through, you cannot pray. And for me, what I do is I still get on my knees. <laughs> I still get on my knees, and there are times that I just cry. There are times that the tears just come down. I don't utter a word. Those are the times God is saying to me, Geneva, just sit in my presence. Let me minister to you. Let me talk to you. You see, when my tears are coming down, I remember Psalms 56, verse 8. It says, you keep track of all my sorrows. You have collected all my tears in your bottle. You have recorded each one in your book. So that tells me that I don't care what I'm going through. My tears are a language that he understands. None of them go unnoticed. None of them fall to the ground and disappear. He collected all my tears in a bottle, and he remembers everything. You see, so when I'm going through it, and I sometimes I start on my knees, <laughs> I start on my knees, and then I get up. You see, when I start on my knees, it's because I can't get a word out. The tears are coming. I'm groaning. I'm moaning. God is speaking to me, and I start on my knees. But then I get up, and I claim my territory. And the first word out of my mouth might be Jesus. Mm, Jesus. Precious Jesus. Jesus. You see, when your first Jesus comes out, the second one is easier, and the third is easier. So I continue to say it until the weight is lifted off my shoulder, until I stop crying, and until my hands go up and I start to say, God, I know that you are for me. This situation has an end. Trouble don't last always because this season has an expiration date. And God, I'm coming through. And when I come through, I'm still going to praise you. Amen. So power has the ability to shift our focus from 
our situation to God. Prayer increases our faith and our trust, and it opens all kind of doors, but it also shut the doors that you shouldn't be going through. Prayer is your weapon, a mighty weapon. Prayer is also your armor and your shield, and prayer is very powerful. Why wouldn't you use prayer to get you through any situation? Why wouldn't we? Amen? So I want to encourage you today to do what is possible and leave the impossible to God. What is possible? Pray. Pray. That is possible. You have that weapon. Use it. Children of God must use the weapons that they're given. Use it. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and praise. We're not too cute we're not too cute for the devil to attack. So we should not be too cute to praise God. Amen. And then there are some scriptures that I will, will just talk about. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you will receive it and it is yours. <laughs> when you trust God, Make sure you have his words with you. Romans chapter 8, verses 38 and 39 says, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor powers nor things present nor things to come, nor height nor death, nor any other creature, human being included, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. What is separating you? Do a self-check. Whatever is separating you, get rid of it so you can get into the presence of the Lord. Whatever it is, give it to God so that you can get into the presence of God. If you want to get out of your fire, give it to God. If you want to get out of that rip current that's, that's going back and forth, that's tossing you back and forth, give it to God. If your back is against a wall and you cannot see a way out, give it to God. Amen. Nothing should be able to separate you from the love of God. These things can't separate him from you, so these things should not separate you from him. Amen. Amen. And Isaiah 41 verse 10 says, Fear thou not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen you. Yeah, I will help you. Yeah, I will uphold thee with the right hand of righteousness. Now, when God tells you this, fear not. He tells you this in Isaiah and then a couple of verses later, he says, don't be afraid. These commandments, don't be afraid, fear not. Don't be afraid, fear not. But yet still we walk around timid Christians, afraid of our shadows. It's time for the children of God to claim the power that God has given them. It's time for the children of God to fear not and let God strengthen them and uphold them with his righteous right hand. Amen. And then Deuteronomy 31 verses 8 says, And the Lord, he is the Lord that goes before you. So if he's going before you, then he already know that your back was going to be up against the wall, right? And he already know that you're going to go through the fire. And he already know that your life isn't the way he you want it because you're going through the rough waters. He will be with you. He's never going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you. And that's one of his promises. Get the promises in the Bible. And when you're going through hard times, when you kneel to pray, if you can't even pray anything, pray his word back to him. Pray his word back to him. God, this is what your word says. This is what your word. You, you said you're not going to leave me. You know, when I go into work in the mornings, 
and I'm dealing with a situation, the only thing I can say is, hmm, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. I don't care if the patient is crashing. I don't care if he can't breathe. I can take care of you because of who I serve. You see what I'm saying? I'm not depending on my own strength. I'm depending on God to get me through this situation, keep you alive, and let me go home to my family. You see what I'm saying? So we need to realize that when we're going through something, Get a scripture that correlates with what we're going through. Use it for your benefit. Use it to strengthen you. Use it and let the devil flee from you. Sometimes we have the devil following us too close. He follows us too close because we are afraid to say, hey, this is my territory. What are you doing here? You got to let the devil know where his place is. He's under our feet. Why is he standing up in front of us? Why do we tolerate him? You know, why do we listen to him and, say, and when he tells us, why don't you just leave God? Why should I leave him? Why should I leave? What do you have to offer me? What do you have to offer? You have nothing to offer me. It's hot in Florida. Do you think I want to go to hell? No. So you need to stay in your lane. Amen? Amen. And Psalms 34 says, the righteous cry out, and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. Hmm. Another promise. So what trouble are you going through? What are you dealing with today that you need to cry out to God today? Because you need a relief today. You don't want it tomorrow. You need it today. You think about that. What do you need God to solve today that you know he's able to solve today? What are you going to do? Because the scripture said, while you are yet calling, he's answering. He's answering. And then the last scripture is John 14, verse 27. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Because you see those rough waters, sooner or later he's going to lead you beside still waters and he's going to restore your soul. And you see when your back is up against the wall, all you have to do is say, I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stand with me and listen to the words of this song, Worship with us. Hey, this is Bishop Everett Gakes. I want to take a moment to just thank you for tuning in to our service today. I know that God has great things in store for not only One in Christ Ministries, but for you as well. So we pray that you would tune in to us next week to hear what God has in store. God bless you. We look forward to seeing you soon.